What's happening guys, it is LA Kid 32 and today I'm continuing with my Road to Glory series. Now this episode is going to be slightly different because I'm going to have to do post commentary because I did record the live sound for episode 3 but unfortunately it got corrupted and I lost the sound. Last episode I played two games, first one I won for two, second one I got disconnected so it was a no contest. So today I was hoping to, so in this episode I was hoping to confirm my promotion into Division 9. I made three upgrades to my left back, my centre mid and my right winger. My first upgrade I made was to my centre mid and it was in the form of Pedro Obiang, played for West Ham from Spain, 74 rated silver, born for 1,200 coins, 3 star week for 2 star scale, looked like an absolute beast if I'm honest, was really looking forward to playing with him and you know what? He, he, was actually really, he was actually quite good and I'll be more on that later on. The second upgrade I made was to my left back and I made it in the form of Aaron Questwell and once again played for West Ham. The 73 rated left back going for 1,700 coins, 3 star week for oh, again 2 star skills, 78 pace, 70 dribbling, 72 defending which was pretty good stats and again I was looking forward to solidifying my defence a little bit to give him chemistry with Henry who is also from West Ham. Like, Seriously, what is up with me and West Ham players? And finally, I decided to bring in Swansea's Modu Barrow, going for 650 coins, which is an absolute bargain. Looks like an absolute beast as well. 81 pace, 71 dribbling, high medium work rates, two star week for three star skills this time. So I was just looking forward to busting out some skills with this guy. Anyway, I was going into those games hoping to secure my promotion and hopefully secure it with a flourish. Let's do this. So anyway, heading into the first game, and this was my opponent's team. It was quite average, but at the same time it was going to be a challenge because his chemistry was quite scary. So you know what, I was looking forward to this. But I don't really have much to tell you about this first game, except it was incredibly boring. Like seriously, for the first 30 minutes of the match, barely anything happened. It was like the sex life of a Catholic nun. Like it was dull and just non-existent. Finally, something exciting happened. Took the pressure on him, Arshavin won the ball, pinged in a disgusting pass to Quezzi Apaya, cuts in his left foot and puts it in the bottom corner. And all of a sudden, this match just got interesting. All right, I was on my way to promotion. So anyway, not long after that, almost immediately after kickoff, Apaya turned from goal scorer to goal provider as he slotted in a pass to Modu Barrow who slotted in under the keeper. Like seriously, like that pass was enough to make even Perlo go down. I was hunting for that third goal and my opponent decided he couldn't take any more and decided to leave the game. I had to look at the performances on my three upgrades first. Uh, Cres Creswell did okay. Obiang was an absolute beast in that midfield. He actually felt really good to play with. And Barrow, from, for the most part of that game, was incredibly anonymous. So I was hoping to use him a bit more in the second game. But you know what? You know, I was really looking forward to the second game. Heading into my second game, I had nothing to lose, but I wanted to win it anyway. Anyway, looking at my opponent's team, I noticed two things that were quite weird with it. First of all, he had a lot of pace. And second of all, in his defence, he decided to trust a central attacking midfielder and a goalkeeper to hold down his defence. So I thought, you know what? The same's going to be easy. And that was evident from the first half when he gifted me an opportunity. But unfortunately, it was returned to sender as I put it over the bar with Barrow. And that was the first of many. After some great work in the midfield, Obiang made like Moses and split my opponent's defence up like the Red Sea, but Arshavin has the finishing of a disabled hippo and hits the post from roughly 12 yards. And finally, third time lucky, I did find my breakthrough. Good work from Obiang on the edge of the box, some good give and go play between Apaya and Punchen, and finally, I did take the lead which I really deserved, and really I was on my way to gaining this title. Heading into halftime, I could easily have been winning by more than one as his goalkeeper for the second time this game gifted me an opportunity and our Shavin, not once, but twice couldn't get the job done. Like seriously, this guy couldn't even score in a brothel. And not too long after that, I had another opportunity to make it 2-0. Some good combination play between Barrow and Lucas, but unfortunately Lucas, again like our Shavin, couldn't get the job done. So looking at the halftime stats, I did in fact deserve to be winning, but I did deserve to be winning by a lot more than one goal. Like, like if my attackers could finish, then I would actually be winning by more than one nil. For most of the second half, I was on the back foot. You could say that my opponent improved, but in reality, he had resorted to a pretty desperate tactic. 
This tactic is what I like to call the hit and hope. So what is the hit and hope I hear you wonder? Well allow me to explain. The hit and hope. The tactic that FIFA players resort to when they can't penetrate an opponent's defence or create clear-cut chances. It is characterised by the player taking shots from ridiculous distances such as 40 or 50 yards in the hope that it will fly into the top corner. This is a relatively desperate tactic that has been used for generations. So in what was the final minute of the game, I had a millionth opportunity to make it 2-0 when Barrow racing through on goal, cut inside, the goal was gaping and then he hit the post. Yep. Yep, that's how it ended. It hit the post. Good, I hate the post. That did not matter because I had won the game and thus meaning I had won the title. Probably should have won it by more though with the amount of chances I've had, but you know what? Doesn't matter how I won the game, just as long as I won it. So I'm looking at the performances now of the players. Mojabao got the highest rating with an 8.2, was absolutely brilliant in that game. Obiang an absolute rock in that midfield, putting the strings defensive and attacking wise as well. Felt really good to play with as well, probably my favourite upgrade I think I've made so far in this series. And Henry as well, an absolute rock in that defence and the Turkish Batman in goal, putting in a shift. And ladies and gentlemen, there is confirmation that I have in fact won the title. And notice as well guys that ever since I started this series, that I have not lost the game yet. So I'm hoping when I go to Division 9, I'm hoping to carry that on and hoping to build some sort of streak a little bit. So yeah, I'm probably going to have to end this episode here. I did try something different. And yeah, so probably next episode, I probably will go back to normal. So anyway guys, if you have enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. I've been LA Kid 2 And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.